But I've always felt that what I like, everyone else would like. I didn't have to do a focus group. I'm like the average guy. Ed Snyder, philanthropist, entrepreneur, owner of the Philadelphia Flyers, and their number one fan, an icon in the sports and entertainment industry, devoted family man. Sure, he was all of those things, but really he was just a regular guy with big ideas. Ed was a humble man. He came from humble beginnings, and while he was a man who clearly had a sense of all that he accomplished, he never forgot who he was. It started in Washington, D.C. at his parents' grocery store. When I had to mop the floor at night to clean it up, I loved it. I took great pride in making sure there wasn't one spot on that floor. While attending the University of Maryland, he sold Christmas trees and graduated with an accounting degree. He then did the books for a gas station, but after a week, he had a better plan. I was making $5,000 a year. So I went to Bernie, I said, how long do you think it'll be before I'm making 25,000? He said, I'm sure within five years you'll be making $25,000. I said, I'd rather own the gas station. <laughs> yeah. He was always on the lookout for the next big thing. He owned a successful record sales company, and then he moved to Philadelphia. At the time, I was running the Philadelphia Eagles football team. He fell in love with the city, and that would change his life. On a trip to Boston, he saw thousands of people waiting in line. For what? Hockey. He thought Philly needs this. Philadelphia would never be the same. Ed mortgaged his home and founded the Philadelphia Flyers. Probably the most fear I ever had was the day I closed the deal on the Flyers. The Flyers needed a place to play, so Ed had the vision to build the Spectrum and later the Wells Fargo Center. And within just seven years, he saw his team bring home two consecutive Stanley Cups. Two million people came to two separate parades, which is pretty remarkable. The passion that the Flyers have starts with and ends with Ed Snyder. I think Ed Snyder is probably the biggest fan the Flyers have. He's been passionate all these years, that's his baby. He was always very welcoming of the fans coming to him and greeting him. And he knew that he was the public face of the team and that it was his team. Ed cared deeply about the team's fans and the team's players. Their experience was also a special one. And I really like him and love him too, you know. One year I had a, a bad start, first 30 games I wasn't playing so well and he, and he actually brought me for lunch and I was, I was pretty nervous and he basically just told me to relax and just go out there and have fun. It looks like I'm not having fun anymore. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot of owners that would go see the players and say, just relax and have fun. We all felt the, the special thing about the Flyers is, is their competitiveness, but I think also the family atmosphere. He is the Flyers. He is the face of the Flyers. He is, he was, he always will be. The Flyers were his passion, but Ed wanted to win at whatever he took on. In business, that happened a lot. In the 70s, he created Prism, the channel that would inspire a new trend of regional sports networks. In the 80s, he started one of the nation's first all sports radio stations. He created Spectacore when he saw it made sense to bring sports teams, entertainment, and arena management together. Things that are taken for granted today all came out of this guy's head. He was a genius. And in the 90s, he created a joint venture with Comcast and remained the managing partner. Right after we made the deal, I went to my first hockey game with Ed. We were in Madison Square Garden, and that was really exciting to be the only Flyers fans in a huge screaming Ranger building. And I invited the chairman of home box office to join me. And Ed gave me one of those Ed Snyder looks with the eyes and the stare. And the game ended and thank goodness we won the game. And he took me aside and we were brand new partners. We didn't know each other that well. He said, don't ever bring a Ranger fan to my box again. And I never did. One of Ed's hallmarks was his management style. It didn't matter whether it was the hockey team or his business team, Ed surrounded himself with the best people. You look for good people 
and you let them do their job. You don't work for Ed, you work with Ed. There's kind of one Ed, there's not a business Ed or a hockey Ed or a family man Ed. I think he's, he really is one seamless guy. He really is. Um, and everybody sees that, it's genuine. Sometimes that meant meetings at Philly's Oregon Diner. I mean, if you don't have ketchup on the table, you're gonna have a problem. And you better go along with Ed's superstitious side. He didn't walk under ladders. He didn't let black cats cross your paths. And if you were at a hockey game and you were sitting in a particular seat when the team scored, you didn't change that seat either. To Ed, hockey and work were important, but so was free time and family. And if you could just see in his eyes how he is when it comes to his kids, his grandkids, his extended family, he's just that type of individual. And everybody that works for him honestly loves the man. And I could be somewhere and call him up and say, help, and that's it, he'll be there. It's just like you're part of their family and that's how they made you feel. He loved directing his enthusiasm to things he thought merited everyone's attention. And no surprise, he was successful at that too. When you think of philanthropy, you think of Ed Snyder. If you go around Philadelphia, if you go to the hospitals, if you go to the recreation centers, you're going to see the Snyder Foundation having been involved, or you're going to get the Florida Charities involved. It goes on and on. Ed was also committed to educating youth about capitalism, true capitalism. He founded the Saul C. Snyder Entrepreneurial Research Center at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania and the Ed Snyder Center for Enterprise and Markets at the University of Maryland. The biggest legacy that Ed leaves with students is to realize that if you chase money for what money is, you're actually going to fail. If you do what you're good at and what you love, money will come. That philosophy worked for Ed. He loved hockey and found great success, but when he realized the potential to bring kids, sports, and life skills together, he knew he truly found his legacy. All the opportunities that I've gotten in my life really came from Snyder Hockey. The Ed Snyder Youth Hockey Foundation started in 2005. The program uses hockey as the hook to teach thousands of inner city children how to succeed in the game of life. His legacy will be all of those children who have passed through the organization and grown up to help us build a better Philadelphia. Out of respect, everyone referred to him as Mr. Snyder, but he really only wanted everyone to call him Ed. I don't know how many times he'd say to me, he'd say to Bob Clark, he'd say to, to Hexy, Ed, call me Ed, please call me Ed. He told me that he'd fire me if I didn't start calling him Ed. On his 82nd birthday, he made a speech that what he wanted for his birthday was for everyone to call him Ed. He did want people to call him Ed. I could never call him it. Mr. Snyder, yeah. Mr. Snyder. Just out of respect, Mr. Snyder. And the one day I kind of joked with him, I said, well, actually over at the office, we call you Big Ed. He laughed, he thought that was funny. You learn something every day, you really do. You have to think positively and you have to feel very confident that what you're doing is gonna succeed or you surely will fail. And luckily it succeeded.